Hey, what's up, musical friends? I'm Jay Sennett. For my brief lesson today, I want to talk about the art of the four bar or eight bar breaks in jazz drumming. If you're in a context when you're playing jazz, drums of course, more often than not you will be asked and expected to play four or eight bar breaks or choruses, but we'll talk m mostly about four bar and eight bar breaks, uh, more often than you'll be asked to play open solos. Okay, so keep that in mind. So you have to be able to understand the concept of the four and eight bar breaks. Now, you play time for four bars, and then you improvise for four bars or eight bars. Now, what's happening when you're playing the time for eight bars or four bars? Somebody else is improvising during that section. So, considering it really becomes a, co a conversation, a musical dialogue. A call and response. They will play their four or eight bar breaks, improvise through those those bars, and then it's your turn to improvise and play the four bars or eight bars. So you will have to understand song form because you will have to know where you are inside of the composition. Are you in the bridge section or the B section? Are you in the last A section? Uh, and, and and one reason why you have to know this is because you want to know how to resolve your solo. If you're, if you're the, the, the drummer that's playing, or the musician that's playing the last eight bars of the song, for example, and then we're coming back to the top of the, uh, of the form and starting the melody, you have to know how to resolve your, your, your solo, okay? Um, there's a way to, there's a natural resolution to what you play when you're coming out of bars. You know, eight bars back to the top. Um, so that's one important reason why you have to understand song form. Plus, the thematic part of it, you know, the connectivity to the theme. You have to know where you are inside of the song. So there's this thematic, logical development and continuity. So, I, I, another rule I have is when you're playing the eight or bars or four bars, always leave yourself some place to go, man. When, when you hit that first four bars or eight bars, don't clutter it up with a bunch of stuff, man. Because then, then you take away, you know, that, that smart continuity. Then you really have no place to go. Everything's all cluttered up. and uh, So you want to build. The song has to have forward movement, a forward moving quality to it. All right? And then the, the smart musical elements like dynamics, you know, Use your textural variations smartly. Um, accents, uh, your independence, you know, be creative with your independence, your four-way independence. All these things play into this. So in four-bar breaks, the tempo is usually mid-tempo, the slower tempo, uh, because it's all about the pacing of the song, the time of the song, um, the tempo. Eight-bar breaks tend to usually, the song usually, is faster, not always, but, but generally faster because it's, it's moving along more quickly. Um, so, and, and it's very different doing this concept, playing with other musicians and then playing by yourself. When I'm playing and practicing these ideas by myself, I try to put, when I'm playing the time part, I try to have a little rhythmic or melodic motif in my head to act as a springboard for when I start my solo. So keep in mind, it's very different playing with other musicians because you are feeding off of them when you're, you're trading. You're trading fours or you're trading eights. So that dialogue, that musical dialogue has to have logical continuity and, you know, it has to be musical. So it's a language you're speaking, man, and you, you, you really have to have a lot of things at your disposal to be able to spontaneously create. You know, you're creating in the moment, but it has to be musical. You have to keep good time. You have to maintain that strong swing beat, even in your solo, okay? So, just a few things to keep in mind in understanding this concept. So let me, let me, let me play some fours for you. Trey, I'll play time for four bars, and then I'll play some solo stuff for four bars. All right? One, two, one, two, three, four.
just playing some ideas, trying to uh, get some sort of melodic and rhythmic motif in my head when I'm playing the time. But you see what I mean? You have to keep... Now, remember, in jazz, it's swung, so you have that underlying triplet feel. And most of your ideas have to be structured around that triplet kind of concept. Variations of triplets, quarter note triplets, eighth note triplets, sixteenth note triplets, you know, depending on the tempo. Um, so let's take a look at eight bars. And, and, you know, you can feel how I'm resolving the end of my four bar phrase or the end of my eight bar phrase coming back to the time. So let's pick up tempo just slightly for the eight bars. One, two, one, two, three, four. Two. ideas off the top of my head. But again, keep in mind when you're playing the four or eight bar breaks, somebody else is improvising during that time when you're playing the time for those four bars or eight bars. So again, that dialogue is happening. And, you know, <laughs> it's so spontaneous, man. And that's, that's the challenge in that concept of trading the fours and trading the eights. You have to keep in time you want to keep the swing beat happening, right? Your ideas want to be compatible to what's going on around you. You want to be musical with what you're playing and hopefully creative using dynamic variations, again, independence, accent placement, textural variations, all these different things that go into this, man. And it's about being smart, you know, but you can't lose the time and you have to, to maintain that strong swing beat and you have to know where you are inside the composition, okay? So <clears throat> that's just a little bit of sharing some of my ideas about the concept of the four-bar breaks or the eight-bar breaks. Same, same philosophy, uh, philosophy applies to the choruses. Like if you're playing a blues, a chorus would be 12 bars, 12 bars, or a 32-bar standard form, too. You have to know where you are inside the compositions. Just so you know where you are in terms of how to resolve what you're playing. That's one reason. Plus the thematic part of it. You want to know if you're in the bridge or the D section or what, which A section you're in. You know, or where are you inside that 12 bar blues? You know? And because all this gives you, it feeds you the information that you need to know to, in, in deciding what you're going to play. Okay? So, 
I hope you got something out of this little brief demonstration of the classic fours or the eights. That's how we say, play some fours or, or eights. And a lot of times musicians will just go, the horn player might look at you and just hold up four fingers. You got to know what that means, you know, or they'll go, you want to do some eights or you want to trade, right? Trades, meaning fours or eights or choruses or whatever. Uh, sometimes, you know, you, they'll start off with eights, then they'll break it down to fours, and then they'll come down to twos. <laughs> you just have to understand this stuff, man. But fours and eights for today, just to give you the general idea of the, of the concept. Okay? I'm Jay Sennett. Thanks so much for uh, watching. Hope you got something out of this brief lesson. And we'll see you again soon with some more drumming ideas. Thank you.